Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, another session here at um, Crypto Miners. My name is Jenny, and I'm going to be your host for today. And um, to everyone joining us on our uh, session here for the first time, I welcome you to the Crypto Miners uh, community. If um, you know, you have any questions that you would like to ask the team during this session, please prepare your questions. And um, when it's time, we will try to take as many as we can. On today's session, we have um, Blockchain Spots, the team from Blockchain Spots. They are going to be joining us and, um, you know, enlightening us about the project. You know, it's not every day that we get to um see blockchain working with spots uh so yeah this is a pretty uh, unique one and as i mentioned I'll do well to stay till the end of the session and um you know join us as we know more about the project um we will wait for the team uh just a little bit so that they can join us and then we will begin
All right. Um, I see that our guest is here, and um, thank you everyone for you know being patient and um, waiting. So, uh, blockchain spots. Who do we have uh, representing the team? Please unmute your mic, and um, so we can get started. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Yevgeny. I am the partnership director at Blockchain Sports, so representing the team and the project here. Oh wow! Um, welcome. Could you please, you know, pronounce the name again so I can get the hang of it? Sure. Uh, just it's easier to say Yev. Uh, I think yes. it's going to be easier. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, Yev. Yeah. Okay, welcome here, and it's great to have you here with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. So um, I would like us to, you know, just dive right in and begin. So let us start with an introduction, a proper introduction of the team behind uh, Blockchain Spots, you know, and maybe sure. a little bit of background, a little bit of background um, prior to this project, something, you know, just to get to know the team better. Of course. So we are a team of 150 people. Um 80 of them being software developers. So we have, let's, we build our experience uh, mainly in crypto, but uh, also we have big experience in esports and traditional boxing and big, big events and sports around the world. Uh, the team is international. Um, uh, most of the team is uh, from CIS region. And uh, we have, been uh, dealing in different projects in crypto so we launched a big project called liquid mining which is cloud mining application basically allowing you to mine uh, startups and we also introduced ASIC mining as well uh, we have done things with um, um, it's let's call it uh, sending of mass uh, marketing messages across whatsapp and telegram things like that we have also um, been dealing with traditional mining for a long long time me personally i was involved in many uh, in many international projects so i was uh head of partnership and uh, business development and uh in world of boxing which is a big promotion uh dealing with the fights like klitschko povetkin uh you know collecting twenty thousand, twenty five thousand people arenas and obviously working with uh, big international uh, federations uh, wba wbc wbo and so on uh the team has also a lot of experience in smart contracts and software development on the web3 side uh, also in game dev, uh, especially NFT games, um, and we're developing now uh, one as well that is going to be one of the verticals within uh, the uh, blockchain ecosystem. So accumulating the experience from all the fields that we have worked in, we decided to build the blockchain sport project. Um, and uh, what it is, uh, it is a big ecosystem uh, that we will dwell into different sports verticals. The first one we started with is football. So we bought uh, five hectares of land, which is basically five football fields, at an academy in uh, Brazil and a Capiara, Fortaleza region, and have created a big funnel for young athletes to come and try out with us. We also employed uh, international scouts from Europe to come and live in Brazil. And uh, for the past three months, they traveled 30,000 kilometers all over Brazil and already tried out and watched over 10,000 uh, applicants. Out of the 10,000 applicants, we have already selected 100 players from the ages of 14 to 18 years old that showed the most potential. And we are already preparing for these players to be you know, transferred to different international clubs. Because this is another p important part. Um, it's not just a uh, crypto project. It's also a traditional business project. So with the first vertical in the blockchain uh, sports ecosystem being football, uh, the main um, and one of the, let's say, major profit centers is the uh, transfer of football players. Uh, one would ask us. Uh, one would ask uh, oneself is uh, so. What's what's uh, how is it different from traditional uh, from traditional thing? How a traditional business is done in football? Well, 
in football there is different uh, many different scouts managers and there's a big process of getting uh, to the player uh, by the club that wants to get that player with the blockchain system we are simplifying the process we're digitalizing the players into nft cards and international scouts from international teams can come and bid for them uh, the metadata for the NFT will then represent not only players' progress in, in uh, his training during the camp, but also the transfers from club to club. Uh, thus, uh, another thing, uh, a regulation by FIFA also says that whoever is the first scout who found the player and then uh, raised the player to become a star also gets a, a share of the transfer each time the player is transferred from club to club. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Uh, the beauty of blockchain sports uh, project is that we are, uh, we are now going through a private round, a uh, private IDO, and uh, all the information is available on the website. You can go to our Twitter page and find all the links. Um, and then it will be broken down. The IDO is broken down into four stages, which then will go public. And anybody who's willing to jump into the project uh, will also be able to own equity in the business. So we're putting up 20% equity. Uh, let's, let's call it up for grabs. So anybody who wants to buy a token can buy the token, burn it into an NFT, and thus represent a percentage, certain percentage, depending on the number of tokens bought, a certain percentage in the 20% pool that we are sharing from the profit that we are generating within the ecosystem. The first, uh, the first profit center is, of course, uh, football transfers, as, uh, player transfers, as, as I said. But having accumulated a lot of experience in sports, traditional and otherwise, otherwise I mean esports, we do understand how to bring money into a, uh, a club, a federation, or in this case, a, a blockchain ecosystem. So we will then dwell into creating sponsorship contracts. We've already been approached by a couple of betting companies who are interested in what we're doing because it's not just business. It's also something uh, good for the kids that do not have otherwise access even to mo uh, mobile phones sometimes in Brazil in those areas. And uh, the other is the um, magnitude of the project that we're growing. We're partnering up with media leagues. Uh, we're talking to one in Dubai right now, uh, talking to football clubs. And of course, we're talking to scouting platforms so we are building a lot of momentum right now to really push this project forward after uh, in our roadmap you will also find that uh, football is not just uh, the end uh, the start and the end this is just one of the verticals we will then be moving on to uh, fighting ice hockey and cricket in India so all of the big mass sports um, that people are interested in watching that people are interested in following and of course that are interested in making money on so we are offering that opportunity to the fans and there is going to be a lot of different mechanics added throughout the project um, uh, we're going to be adding a fantasy league we're going to be add adding an NFT game there's a lot of good things to come within the project All right. Um, thank you for that detailed intro. Now, let me ask, right? I think these are the two questions that first popped in my head when I, you know, was doing more research on the, the project. I think the first question would be, um, why was there any like specific challenge or, or problem in, in the traditional sport industry that, that motivated uh, the development of blockchain sports? Of course. Uh, well, there is uh, essentially two of them that are outlined, but um, one of the major ones, and this is also similar to any sports, essentially, uh, a lot of athletes, uh, or let's say a lot of young people, have a lot of potential. But it's very difficult for them to reach the big stars because they don't know exactly where to go. Uh, people also always get focused uh, on the big stars and the little guy, if you will, does not get the due light. 
So what we're trying to solve here, we are actually looking for only uh, young potential athletes, not going, you know, we're not going into transfers of your Ronaldo's or your Roberto Carlos's or your Ronald Genius of the world. We're going and building a career and building a success story for young kids. So we're trying to solve the issue of lack of, let's say, um, supply of good athletes to the world. So, you know, the best always compete for the best. And the second problem we're trying to solve is, of course, the fact that uh, the transparency with the, as we all know, uh, smart contracts are very, very transparent. There is no way around them. And with the blockchain system, it's also very transparent. There's no way around them. And uh, in traditional sports, uh, the things, how things are done on paper, if you will, there's a lot of, well, if you say dodgy dealings, but uh, obviously to a lesser extent, the higher you go. Um, and there's a lot of different middlemen. Uh, and that kind of hinders uh, the possibility of a young athlete to really get to the club quickly, show the potential and, and just boost the career in, into space, if you will. So uh, with the one of the mechanics that I explained that uh, the uh, the players that have potential for already some value of transfer uh, will be digitalized into NFT and anybody can track the progress. Uh, was there an injury? Uh, how good that player and which, which foot uh, that player hits better? How does he do crosses? What about dribbling? What about uh, ball control and things like that? Everything is there to stay. And obviously, the metadata can only be added. It cannot be, be changed. And uh, I think these are the two main things we're trying to solve is, first of all, transparency. And second of all, uh, providing more opportunity for the less fortunate. All right. Um, now, the second question would be, why did you choose Brazil? Just, uh, you know... <laughs> yes, out of I, I mean, um, if we are looking at football as a sport, Brazil has always been there on the map. Uh, it produces uh, the world title winning team. Uh, it has a lot of a lot of culture for football. I mean, literally every kid uh, is playing football or trying to play football. It has a lot of stars. Uh, uh, well, previously and now that people look up to. And this is just something is that is in the blood of Brazilians. I mean, this is their sport. They own the sport. They love the sport. And we decided that uh, this is a good opportunity that we can create uh, an opportunity in turn from us for players, uh, for players to really show the talent. So choosing Brazil was kind of an easy option. I mean, we're not uh, we're not going to be sticking just with Brazil. I mean, we had uh, offers and and people approached us from Turkey. We had offers and people approached us from Japan. We are considering other locations, but Brazil uh, seemed like a perfect fit in terms of the number of people playing football, thus the percentage potential to get uh, good stars selected. Okay, uh, I suppose I, I understand that um, a lot of grassroots players uh, are available in that country. Um, now, let me ask this important question. You have told us about, you know, how blockchain sports is going to work, how you intend to generate revenue and all of that. But what uh, advantages um, does blockchain sports offer to these athletes you know, in terms of their personal brand and revenue streams for them. Okay, of course. Well, uh, it's very simple um, and yet complex um, answer, I would say. A, a player who has potential, like I said, it's very difficult for that player to understand who to approach, where to apply. And especially with um, kids living in, in uh, rural areas that sometimes, like, literally, they r really do not have access even to mobile phones. It, we are like a gateway for them to really make it to the big leagues. So this is one of the big advantages that we um 
offering to these kids is that we know the business of sports and we know the business of blockchain and we know how to marry the two. So I would say the biggest advantage is that we have created a gateway for kids to really reach the big clubs. Um, if we're talking about revenue streams for these guys, well, of course, uh, the, the better they progress, uh, the more value they bring to a potential club, the more they're worth on the transfer market. And the transfer kind of di dictates what salaries they're paid. So it's a gateway and an opportunity to make a name for themselves and, of course, money. So I would, I would put it in these two points. And uh, Oh, and one other thing. Uh, like I said, as we're going to be introducing fantasy leagues and an NFT game, uh, there's going to be also a collectible value uh, for players. And obviously, we all know how IP rights work and uh, anything used for the image or a likeness of, uh, of an athlete, obviously, they get paid a royalty. So there is uh, various revenue streams that we have created for the players that really have a potential to become big stars. All right, thank you for answering that. Um, now, let me ask, can you elaborate on um, on the process of onboarding these new um, sport athletes um, and, uh, onto the blockchain um, platform? Just a little, a little um, el elaboration on how this process works from the scratch. Okay, of course. So uh, as we are talking um, about the fact that there is traditional physical business uh, and there is um, Web3 business, as, well, two aspects to this, um, the onboarding of the players right now is done by our uh, scouts traveling um, with a branded, uh, in branded cards and branded clothes. So everybody knows exactly of what uh, project they're coming from, traveling to around Brazil and looking at kids and looking at different academies that we can take on contract. Um, what we are doing to ease this process is, again, that is all represented on the website. We are taking a lot of effort in, and we're putting a lot of effort into this. We are uh, constructing a, well, I, would, I would go as far as saying state-of-the-art sports complex. So this sports complex uh, housing five football fields will have also administrative buildings for the coaches, you know, the cooks, the medical staff. There's going to be a five-star resort there as well for international scouts to come and see these kids. And, of course, accommodation for the kids uh, to live. Uh, we also do understand that given the young age, 14 to 18, um, they can get homesick. So we have also included within the project, well, within the architectural project, a uh, separate housing for parents. So the kids don't feel homesick. Um, you know, they get supported and motivated by the people they love most. So uh, the onboarding, um, on, on giving you a short answer, is as soon as our scouts identify a potential football player, uh, they uh, either sign a contract with them directly if they are 18 years old or over, or if they are eight, uh, below 18 years old, we sign a contract with their parents uh, and completely cover all the costs in terms of clothing, uh, clothing housing, uh, catering, training, and start building them as uh, big stars. All right. Um, I want to talk about the legal aspect of this, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I watch football. You know, I have a club that I fan and all of that. But I admit that I might not be so knowledgeable on how some of the legalities work. But I think that, um, to an extent, I understand a little bit of it. So that is why I want to ask this question. Now, how do you mm -hmm. how do you guarantee or make sure that whatever athletes you are signing, you know, this child or young man that you're signing, um, what happens if they already um, have interests from, let's say, traditional uh, clubs? Maybe they might not be so big. You know, I mean, those um, 
um, those League Two um, clubs or League Three clubs in in Brazil, you know, and they they are already interested in them. Um, but this particular uh, athlete is interested in you know going with blockchain sports based on you know presentation of the scouts and all of that. Um, how do you avoid? Um, what measures do you put in place to make sure you avoid any legal battles between blockchain sports and traditional um, clubs, no matter how small they may be? I don't know if you get my question. Sure. No, I understand fully. Well, obviously, it's well, it's uh, easy to answer question. If a player has a contract, all we can do is offer better terms, uh, and by offering better terms, signing on that uh, that contract with the club gets uh, ne- renegotiated again uh, with uh, with the player, with that club, and with us. But uh, given the fact that uh, there is age restrictions in terms of uh, traditional transfers, I mean, you cannot just sell a player to a club who is below 18 years old to, let's say, a European club. They can only rent him out, uh, but for the value that they agree on and can buy out that player once the player reaches 18, uh, we do not enter into any legal disputes. I mean, that would be just uh, ridiculous. We're not here to, you know, battle for uh, athletes. We're here to grow them. And uh, we have never actually faced any such predicaments. So, uh, I mean, I don't know how to answer how we we would act in this way. But uh, we are here more to, like I said, to really kind of grow the players. So, if any such conflict will arise, I will definitely let you know how we dealt with that. But if there is, let's say, two clubs, let's say Blockchain Sport and uh, some other club in Brazil wants to get the same player. Well, all we can do uh, on both ends is just to offer the terms um, and the player will decide. There is no way in forcing this. Uh, there is no way in, you know, well, all you can do is convince and all you can do is provide uh, the good, uh, better terms than uh, than the next guy. Otherwise, uh, we, really, we really never faced a situation where we had to battle for a player. To be honest with you, the areas that we have covered uh, they are, uh, yes, I would be honest, right now, kind of poor areas or let's say remote areas. But still, uh, these, uh, but while we go there is, uh, you know, nobody really kind of uh, sheds lights on these kids. Nobody thinks that uh, there is uh, a lot of potential in these areas. And we believe there is. And we actually did hit the jackpot. I mean, with the, with the first, in first three months, finding 100 players that we already put on contract. So, I hope that answers your question. I really don't know how to uh, talk about any uh, legal conflict because we've never been in one. Yeah, I think sufficiently um, it does. Um, moving on, I would love, you know, ask. Um, I want to believe, of course, that you uh, blockchain spots has plans on ground or is actually already in. Um, executing these plans to um, integrate with maybe, like you mentioned, right, that already you're working with some betting platforms. Now, apart from that, uh, what other plans do you have going on in terms of uh, collaborations and integrations with um, maybe existing um, maybe spot platforms and um, uh, infrastructures just for the sake, right. just for the sake of, um, you know, maybe publicity, uh, mass adoption, and all of that? Of course. Well, obviously, uh, articles are being printed about us. Uh, You can find them on uh, Benzinga. You can find them on Yahoo. Uh, There's a couple of other ones uh, we can send links on. Um, But uh, in our vision, the best uh, collaborations here are done, of course, with football clubs. And uh, we are working very actively on that. Uh, I cannot, I cannot disclose uh, uh, a, a lot of details, but just yesterday we had a good interest from some big clubs in uh, Germany. And well, 
after Brazil, Germany is also one of the big, uh, let's say, countries in terms of high quality of football. Uh, I mean, I'm not obviously diminishing the uh, reputation of England, France, Italy and so on. But we do understand that, you know, um, uh, Germany, uh, having an interest from a big club in Germany is, uh, is a big one. Uh, we are also talking to different scouting platforms. So we have talked to six. Uh, we are contacting Hubble. Uh, we are uh, trying to also to talk to Wayscout. We're just trying to find the best opportunity how we can bring value to these platforms. I mean, for example, six, they work in Italy and purely in Series A Italy and uh, obviously covering all the clubs. And they provide metrics uh, for football clubs and uh, obviously coaches. So, you know, how, how much a player has run, how, how many shots he did, how many passes he did, how many uh, goal passes he did, crosses and things like that. But they never actually had anything uh, as a scouting platform per se. I mean, they identify players, they put uh, ratings of these players and they help the coaches of a particular club uh, formulate the strategy correctly. But uh, with our offering, we're saying, listen, we have a lot of players. Let's really create like a huge section on your website, on your offering. Uh, where we can list these players and people can go in, see those NFTs as we initially uh, envisioned and bid for them. And this is something that hasn't been done before in football. I mean, football is very traditional in terms of its business and it's very, very big. Uh, but uh, this is something of a new take we bring into it. So answering your question, in our perfect world, uh, it's partnership with clubs. It's partnership with uh, an endorsement from football players and only, only if they believe in the project. It's nothing paid. We don't do anything paid in that sense. We don't believe in that because we really believe in our product. And, of course, uh, clubs, um, scouting and fitness, well, uh, fitness tracking programs for football and, of course, the federations. All right. Um, now, listen. So, let the players, you know, and all of that. Um, I would like us to talk briefly on um, to those investing. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, let us talk about the token utility because now. Um, People in the community listening, you know, especially investors, will want us to get to the part where, okay, um, I want to buy into the token. What do I need to know about the token? What are the benefits of this token, especially to long-term holders? I believe, of course, that um, the vision is long-term oriented. So to long-term holders, what are the benefits of the token? Just a little bit on the utility of the token to investors. Sure. Uh Great question. So we do, we do not have any utility aspect to the token right now, but that will be introduced later down the line. Uh, and essentially right now it's a full security token. So because of the profit sharing uh, mechanic, uh, but uh, like I said, there's going to be four stages of the idea, <clears throat> excuse me, of the IDO. And the final stage of the IDO, we will list the token on a, on DEXs. Um, so, uh, what you can do right now as an investor, right now the token is going for a private sale and is obviously uh, below the price, it's a, a discounted price. Uh, it's a, initially, the price of the token is $1, right now it's, it's going for $0.80. Cents. And for that, uh, you can buy the token, you can either hold it or you can burn it. Uh, if you burn it, uh, you create an NFT, and that NFT, like I said at the beginning of the conversation, uh, represents equity in the business. Uh, the goal, uh, of course, uh, all of the tokens uh, will be burned, and people will hold NFTs and share that 20% and have that 20% profit sharing of the business from all the revenue streams that we br bring in. But for those who want to speculate on the value of the token, 
can wait and this will happen uh, by the end of the year. Uh, they can wait, hold the token and then trade it on, on DEXs that we will list the token on. So there is two aspects to the security right now. Utility aspects, we will, we will add uh, later down the line, uh, once we start adding fantasy leaks, so things that you can uh, buy uh, to create your best, let's say, team and participate in cash rooms, as we call them, and also make money as, you know, you would do with DraftKings or FanTool. Um, and also we will add a voting mechanics. What we have also uh, realized that, and of course, like I said, you know, having dealt in sports for a long time beforehand, um, many different clubs try to include the governance systems of token holders in, within the club in order to let fans really kind of manage a club. And that really didn't work out. Two bigger decisions were put up for voting. Uh, fans uh, would sometimes not come to a consensus. And in some cases, it would even happen that uh, a decision that would be made by fans really went in contra um, and contrary to the interest to the best interests of the club so we are limiting voting to the things like let's say what color kit we're choosing uh what kind of uh, sponsorship we're working sponsorships we're working with or not working with uh how we let's say where we do additional training camps for the best athletes. So things that are really kind of sound minor, but really give the fans an opportunity to become part of, uh, of the growth of the athletes and the club and the project itself. So right now, no utility, but utility will be added uh, later down the line in the mechanics of the project. All right. Um, now, before I open it up to the community, I would like to ask, um, you know, two questions. First, I will begin with um, funding of the project. Uh, usually when I get to chat with teams who have uh, built something prior to launch, I know not the ones who uh, are planning to, I mean, the ones that actually have you know, their utility on ground in development. Um, the question that comes to my mind, especially from the perspective of, of an investor, is funding, funding, funding. It is very important. Um, so how have you been able to uh, fund the blockchain spots uh, project development up until now? Like, uh, for a project of this magnitude, was there any kind of a VC backing or angel investor, or was it all out of team pocket, or there was a seed sale? Could you just give us more um, information on of course. that? Yeah, of course. So, and however crazy this team, everything, everything has been done out of pocket by the team right now. We made good profits on the different projects that we have worked on. And we decided that this is the best way that, you know, uh, we do it ourselves, especially with the fact that, you know, we're giving away 20% of the profits. However, we are being approached constantly. Uh, I mean, it's just answering emails all day by different uh, VCs uh, from around the world. And the interesting part is that we are not actually looking for money from them. We are looking for, for endorsement. So they, for example, can uh, invest a, a minute amount, even if we let them, you know, because we are very careful into selecting partners into this project. But it's more important in having smart money rather than money itself. So different VCs and different investment funds that we are uh, talking to, some of them have experience in sports, some of them don't. Some of them have experience in Web3, some of them don't. And we are more looking into these investment funds in terms of how they can help push the project forward rather than uh, invest in us and help us uh, take it to the stage that we want to take into because uh, with our own funds, we are more than comfortable in reaching all of the project goals. All right. Uh, now, the last question before I open it up to the community real quick would be um, 
in in my time uh, working as an AMA host, almost two years, I have come across maybe a couple projects. Yes, I would say because they're not, you know, it's not common. Um, but I have come across a couple uh, projects with this idea. Now, of course, there are no, nowhere to be found now, you know. So I would like to know what you are doing differently, you know. So what is it you're going to do differently that is going to keep you in this game for the long term? Well, I think, uh, and this is a great one, uh, and uh, I also uh, asked myself this before we started. I mean, how are we different? Uh, why why we will succeed when others won't? And it's the same thing that I, it's the same question that I asked when I was dealing with different projects in traditional sports. Um, when you have such a big scale project, um, there are all, always, absolutely always, some very obvious things that uh, people overlook. So, for example, coming from traditional sports, people really kind of focus on traditional sports. Uh, but in a project we're marrying with Web3 or with digital services, they kind of uh, pay less attention to the digital services, just, you know, hoping that the people who they will employ as partners or uh, with somebody who they will collaborate will take care of that. And, you know, they don't, they don't, want, they don't want to dwell into details there. And it's vice versa. With us, uh, when selecting a team for this project, we really were careful in terms of who is doing what part and that all parts are really married together. So I wouldn't say that we are doing something uh, extremely unique. Uh, I would just say that we are bringing a lot of different mechanics and a lot of different verticals into one project. So you have your fantasy leagues of the world, but then uh, you don't have traditional business there in those fantasy leagues because they're just selecting IP rights or covering IP rights from different uh, football clubs or different federations and so on. Well, we have both. Then again, uh, you usually have people uh, dealing in NFT games or creating NFT games. And this is just aspect they're working on not having, again, traditional business or, or let's say, um, um, Web3 uh, business with athletes. Well, again, we have all of that together. You have NFTs for the players that can be collected and never used. Well, yes, in so rare or societies, you can use these NFT cards to uh, play fantasy leagues. But then again, we have everything within the ecosystem. So I would say what really kind of makes us stand out is uh, thorough thinking on the traditional business, on the physical business, on the Web3 business, and the marriage of all of them together. So I think that's the, our biggest advantage, is that we fought through all of these directions in terms of putting them into one packaged offer, both for potential big partners and the community. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, let me just go ahead and take uh, questions from the community. Um, but I will sure. begin by asking, I think, two questions I saw in the comment session, section. Um, and this one says, one of the benefits of, you know, of course, the blockchain sports is that you work with the technology that allows a monitoring system that integrates statistics and real-life data um, where to include NFT cards. I don't know. Um, Basically, the person is asking, how does the system work? Uh, what benefits do people have? Do, okay, what benefits do people who have NFT cards get? Oh, okay. So there is, well, obviously, as with any NFT, there is collection value. So uh, it's an opportunity to jump on board when uh, the kid or like a, a, let's call it an athlete is just starting out and for example um his uh identity is digitalized into nft and it worth let's say ten dollars but imagine this player becoming the next messi and it's the same thing as you would have remember uh, there was a big uh well and it still is there is a big collection value for baseball cards uh back in the u.s 
And, you know, the older they are, and as long as they're not open from the packages, the more value, uh, the, the, the more they're worth. It's a, similar, it's a similar situation here. And moreover, uh, once we introduce the fantasy league aspect, you will able, uh, be able to power up or let's say level up those NFT cards within uh, within the system, within uh, the Fantasy League, uh, well, the Fantasy League itself. And that will be represented also in the metadata. And we will also offer an opportunity to remint those cards to visually represent your achievements. So there's two values there, really. It's collection value for resale, and there is also use value to participate in the Fantasy Leagues and uh, win cash. All right, let me take the second question uh, from the comment section and then go ahead and unmute some people. So this one says, does the sports token have strong security or oversight mechanisms to prevent manipulative or fraudulent actions by parties involved in the project? I Can you uh, elaborate on that? I didn't fully understand what you meant. Okay, I will take the question again. Um, the person is asking, does the spots, um, blockchain spots token have strong security or um, oversight mechanisms to prevent manipulative or fraudulent actions by parties involved in the project? Right, right, right. Okay, now I now I hear. It. So, as with anything Web three related, and when there is money involved, uh, we are employing smart contracts. And of course, smart contracts is something that cannot be tampered with. It cannot be changed. It's very transparent and it's very easy to see if somebody's trying, oh, I don't know imagine how, but trying to tamper uh, with the mechanism within the blockchain ecosystem. So um, we are very careful in designing the smart contracts. And of course, uh, this is the main security that we are providing in terms of uh, the fail safe. Uh, for for the blockchain ecosystem. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Jay, go ahead with your question. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah of course. We can hear you. I think Jay might be having some, uh, I don't know, issues with his Twitter. or But Jay, if you can hear me, we can hear you very well. So please go ahead. In the meantime, I will uh, allow somebody else ask the question. So, uh, Bard, if you're there, that. I think it's just a listener. Uh, I don't think you gave him the rights to speak yet. Oh, there we go. Yeah, he can now. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So um, my question now is, um, with, with regards to your scouting system, what, do you have any, any um, partnerships with the local scouts or renowned scouts on ground? And then you're saying you have some... Um, some grounds already in Brazil and Argentina. So now, when you when you get this these youngsters, do you have the technical know how to actually um, teach them about the Web three ecosystem as to why they should actually follow your platform instead of the normal agency which they know of? And then lastly, I mean, I'm also I'm a huge football enthusiast, so I would love to know if you have like any open to your theme or any kind of contest how I can join and participate in your project. Of course. So when we're talking about scouts, and thanks for the questions, when we're talking about scouts, we employed uh, two big scouts from Europe. Uh, I mean, these guys, uh, our CEO is uh, in good contact with for a long, long time. 
and uh, they have made a name for themselves previously. I don't see any restrictions in talking new, to new scouts and to uh, for them to enter into this project. Of course, I mean uh, we are open to any offers and anything can really that can really help the athletes move forward. It's always is always welcome. Uh, answering your second question in terms of educating the kids in, uh, of the blockchain ecosystem, of course, uh, we we explain everything that is happening within the project. We explain where they're going, what has been done. I mean, as you would know, for some uh, for someone new uh, to the industry, it may take a while. So there's a big learning curve, but of course, we try to. Uh, answer as many questions as they have and uh, give them as much education as possible in terms of what they're actually getting involved in. And uh, to be honest, I forgot. <laughs> oh, the final question is whether there is an opportunity to uh, get in um, into the project and uh, perhaps collaborate. Like, uh, I think kind of follows from my answer from the first question, Jay, is, of course, uh, if you're interested, hit, hit us up. Uh, let's talk if there is uh, touch points that we can deal on, of course. Oh, that that would be great. I'll personally ensure. Because personally, I'm actually a very good footballer. So it's, it's actually love to see the projects like this. Hopefully, I can join you again so and see where that takes me. Sure, of course. Uh, hit us up uh, through Twitter or through other social media and our community management will answer you and then get uh, get you contacted with me or with my other colleagues. Right. Uh, thank you, Jay, for the question. Now, Bard, if you're there. Yeah, I'm here. Thanks, Jenny, for giving me the mic. So my question is actually about the the sports token. So how do you plan to sustain the price of the sport, uh, sports token? And meanwhile, I don't know, is it a deflationary or inflationary token? And uh, like uh, part of, are we expecting to to have a staking pool for the token or any burning or buyback mechanism? Thank you. Okay, if I heard all your questions correctly, Bart, I will try and answer them. But if I'm answering you in the wrong direction please stop me and you know just clarify the question are we not having any staking option within the um uh with the with the token you can use this token like i said uh by the final round of the sale the token will be listed on dexes where you can trade it but at this time uh you can buy the token and once the first round is finished is burn that token into creating an nft the NFT will represent your percentage in the profit sharing uh, part of the business. So I hope I answered the question that you had. Yeah, you answered my question. Bart. But, yeah, but so okay. after the, the NFTs, then the whole tokens will be gone. Or will there be any other utilities for the token there? Oh, well, when we're talking about utility aspect of it. Well, uh, right now we are focusing, uh, as you can, you can see, all of the economics on our website and all the presentation material that we sent out. Um, the majority is going out, is obviously is going out for the IDO that we're doing now. But there are other, um, there's another 40% of the tokens in the emission that will be used for various different other mechanics. So uh, if you want to learn more details, you can visit the website and you can see everywhere where the tokens will be distributed. All right, thanks for your answers. Good luck to the project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for Thank the you questions. Bart. All right, uh, Nadia, we'll take your question last. Okay, thank you, Jenny. Thank you. It's been an amazing space. So my question is, um, I you know every project actually goes through challenges trying to build the project and also I just want to know the challenges you've gone through and also how you're planning to overcome the challenges you actually meet in the future because definitely there will be challenges as long as the project is growing and expanding. Of course. Well, one of the biggest challenges, I think, and 
again, we uh, take this not as an obstacle, but actually as a challenge, is uh, getting vision on the project. Uh, with the crypto space and the crypto industry being so saturated with so many different things and so many different projects, sports or non-sports, for us, the biggest one is to really kind of spread the word about blockchain sport. In terms of the physical business, we have professionals involved and uh, we, will, we are also sharing information in the social media and we will share more information. And we had actually new material come in. Uh, we employed a real professional construction, uh, an architect and other uh, professionals that are really taking this construction to a level that we that we couldn't even imagine, so uh, we overcome the, we overcome that obstacle. Next, it was again working out of the correct way to bring it to the public. I mean, how the tokenomics should work, how the burning system should work, what percentage of profit sharing should we give, uh, in what stages, how we're going go to listing and where. So we kind of overcame that too. I mean, in terms of all the business challenges, the biggest one right now is really spreading the word about us. Uh, we're very transparent and we are offering all the information possible about us. I mean, um, you, know, you can visit my LinkedIn. Um, you can see all of my regalia, where I worked and what I've done. And it's the same about the team too. And uh, right now, I think the biggest one we're trying to reach is... Uh, to spread the word is really is to spread the word and for more people to know about us it's not about um, just uh, the fact that we're doing an audio is the fact that uh, like for example now when we're talking to uh, Jay uh, you never know who you can come across who is interested in joining this not joining just like as an employee I mean uh, that's that's not the point but joining as a partner or as somebody that we can collaborate with so really, I would I would really kind of point out um, this factor, and this is with that we were working really hard on this to really talk about us anywhere and everywhere in the world. All right, thank you very much, and I really hope this project is a success. And with time, of course, you're already spreading the word, so more people will get to know it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your input and thank you for the question. Thank you, Nadia, for the question. Um, so, um, yeah, if there's any other thing, you know, I think that we should maybe quickly touch on uh, public still because, of course, after um, hearing about a project like this, uh, one would want to know how to contribute to uh, the public still. So uh, could you just give us more information on that quickly before we end the session? Of course. Uh, again, before we go, thank you for everybody for joining. Jenny, thank you for being an amazing host. Guys who uh, asked the questions, uh, thank you for answering interesting questions. If there were questions in the comment sections that we weren't able to answer, we are sorry about this. But uh, again, uh, for, uh, we have a lot of different social media, uh, Telegram, Twitter, Discord, uh, Instagram, YouTube, whatever, you name it, we have it. So you can always go there and ask your questions. So I would, uh, if for anybody who really wants to participate within the project, first of all, I would advise to visit the website. It's bcsports.io, uh, so uh, uh, blockchainsports.io. Uh, there, there is all information about the roadmap of the project, what has been done, uh, the team who is representing the project and an opportunity to buy the token. Yeah, if you feel this is something that suits, um, uh, well, that suits your uh, business and that uh, you believe that this project is going somewhere. So go to our website, check out our social media. On the website, it's really like a four-step process to buy the token and you already have it and you're already owning it. It's very simple. And again, all the tokenomics, all the details about us is, is, is all there. So that's the only last word and last thought I would leave you with. And uh, once again, thank you for being uh, active on this Twitter spaces. Jenny, thank you for inviting me. And um, uh, I hope I, I, I can answer more questions uh, later down the line. 
Thank you yeah, for joining us. It was awesome talking to you. And um, for everyone who joined us and participated or um, who might still have questions, right, I will um, urge you all to follow the official Twitter page and also um, hop into any of the communities so that you can stay updated on the latest information uh, regarding the project, right? So thank you once again yes. for joining us. And yeah. Thank you. All right, thank guys. You. Yeah. All right. So I would like to close with saying, you know what I always say at the end of every session that no matter how, uh, you know, excited we are about any project that we present here, um, none of what yeah. we do is financial advice. And you have the responsibility uh, to do extensive research on all of these projects uh, before you invest. All right. So. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you in the next session. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.